All right. I am AJ. I am with Elevar's technical support team. And once again, I'm here with John, our head solutions engineer. Um, today, we're going to be talking a little bit about the Google Ads server side destination that Elevar currently has uh, as a public beta, um, sort of what it is, how it processes events, um, and sort of what some of the limitations of it might be. Um, so I'm going to be taking the role of question asker today because John is our resident expert. Um, so John, I, just talk to me a little bit. What What is Google Ads server side with Elevar? Um, does this mean I just send all of my events to Google Ads like I do to GA4 or um, just get me started? Yeah, sure. So for the last two years or so, even longer actually, we've been relying on GTM to get information to Google Ads. That means it's web-based tracking. And that means that all the good server-side stuff that we offer wasn't really available for Google Ads, which is a problem because it means lower performance in most cases. So we worked really hard on creating this connection with Google Ads, it took a long time. We're finally at the point where we're releasing it to clients. It's in It's been in private beta for a long time, but um, now if you're in the Elevar app, you will see that you can enable Google Ads server-side. So like I said, sometimes it has really great performance benefits and sometimes it looks more like a client side channel for a bunch of reasons that we're going to get into. Um, but what the most important part of the setup is, is differentiating between um, something called the click through conversion and something called the view through conversion. And, and that's, that's a, a complicated part of the Google ad setup, unfortunately. Yeah. And Maybe let me actually stop you there. Let me yeah, stop you there. Let's. Sure. Let, I'm gonna. I'm gonna walk through it like I'm a shopper, actually. Right. Okay. So I'm. I maybe I'm searching for shoes. Right. I type in a couple of keywords in Google. I hit search. First two or three results are some Google ads, um, and then we start to get into some of the more organic uh, search results. What is happening? How does that get into Google ads? Let's say some of those ads are for an Elevar customer. Walk me through sort of the path of, of the actions that are taken and then how those events actually get through to Google Ads from Elevar. Sure. So let's do, let's first look at the click through scenario. So this is the scenario that you typically think of on, on in online advertising. Somebody searches for a pair of Air Jordans. The link from Nike comes up that's sponsored by Nike. It's actually a paid ad. You click through on that link and then you go and buy that pair of Air Jordans. When you click through something called the GCL ID, which is just Google's tag that helps Google understand who clicked what, um, comes through on the purchase. And we're able to send that information to Google Ads. So we're able to say, hey, this person clicked on this ad. This was the GCL ID. And Google can take that GCL ID and make the link. This person clicked on this particular ad. We can credit this ad with this conversion. And in the platform, the number goes from zero to one or whatever, a million to a million and one. Um, and that's how the conversion tracking typically yeah. works. Yeah. So so, so I, I click on it. The GCL ID, which is just Google click ID. Exactly. GCL ID gets appended to that session and it, it flows through and we know, hey, somebody clicked on this ad and then bought the product. Exactly. Right? That's exactly right. That's the simple scenario. The more complicated right. scenario is so we've covered one piece of this that's the click through conversion pretty straightforward nothing out of the ordinary the the more complicated situation is i'm browsing on facebook and a nike app comes up with a new pair of jordans let's say i don't click on them i just see them i'm not clicking on them i'm, sc I'm in scroll mode i see them it's stuck in my head though now so i scrolled past them Tomorrow, I go to Nike to check what the price of these shoes is, what the color options are, all that good stuff. But I never clicked. I never clicked. That's a problem because there's no click ID to link me viewing that ad to maybe my eventual purchase of that product. So how does that get linked? Well, so we uh, so we saw the we saw the product and then we got to the product page organically, right? A few days later, we, yes. we we specifically searched for that product. We didn't click an ad. We just saw it. It's in the back of my mind. Hey, now I'm ready to maybe consider buying that. I type in the exact product and I take the organic link there. 
how do we bridge the connection between those two sort of states of mind, right? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Thanks for clarifying. Yeah. So you go directly to Nike.com, you search for Jordans, but you never made a click on an ad. You just saw it. What happens in the background is not worth talking about here, but it uses third-party cookies. Um, Google is able to still know that you saw that ad. In, so, in most, in some cases, it depends if you're on the same device as you saw the add-on, but let's just keep it really simple here. In an ideal scenario, they can actually see that you saw that ad, you never clicked, but it, it did end up leading to a conversion. So you, you actually buy these Jordans and that is a view through conversion. Now that piece, we can't track server side. So basically what we have to do is we have to layer the two conversions, the click through conversion, the original one I talked about, we can track server side, the view through conversion. We still have to lean on Google tag manager. And then we get, what that means is we have two conversions in Google ads for what is really the same conversion, a purchase conversion. Now that requires you to set up two separate conversions, two separate primary conversions and use them combined as a combined conversion when you actually run your ads. And that's where some of the confusion is. But the reason we ask you to do that is to get around that problem of missing the view through conversions. Um, it's important to note that these view through conversions, they're probably not going to work for very much longer. I think Google, by the end of 2024, the idea is to get rid of third party cookies. So I don't believe that these view through conversions are going to work in the same way as they do today. Um, they may come back in a different form, but this is probably going to get easier over time. But as of today, you still need to set up two conversions per conversion. Now, is this important on add to carts and view items? I personally wouldn't do it. I would just use the server side connection. But for purchases, I would set up both the view through and the click through conversion. Um, how's that? How, how did I do? Very wise, very wise. I think you hit. I think you hit the the point. Um, that's that's how I shop. Uh, you know, I I don't. I tend to not click on ads specifically, and I'll I take a little while to make a purchase. So if I see something, maybe I'll go back later. It's good to know that at least for a little while that that's possible. Um, but you made a perfect segue, I think, into our setup guide for for Google Ads, which is we do ask you to set up both of those uh, conversions. Um, and I think we even ask you to run them sort of as a secondary conversion first. Can you explain that? Sure. Yeah. So like a lot of our destinations, instead of just shutting down your old tracking and lighting up Elevar's tracking, which is scary you have the option to run them in parallel. So what you could do is you can create the conversions that we describe in the guide. So you create two purchase conversions, one for the view throughs and one for the server side connection. And you can keep them both as secondary conversions. That means they won't impact uh, your campaigns at all. They're, they're, they're basically tests. And what you can do is compare those secondary conversions that are coming from Elevar to the totals that are coming in from your existing tracking. Maybe that's the Google Shopping app in Shopify or a GTM tags. Then you can make the decision, does it make sense to transition over to Elevar's tracking from my legacy old existing Google Ads tracking? If it does, you can just turn our ads to the primary, make some adjustments in your campaigns, and then turn off your old conversions. Maybe in certain scenarios, you may find that we perform similarly. And if that's the case, then you have a decision to make. Does it make sense to move to Elevar? Do you want to keep the simpler setup? But there are certain scenarios where we know we perform better and other scenarios where we're closer to like maybe 5% better or so. So um, that that that's in a nutshell is, is the A-B comparison. Yeah. And if I'm a merchant, my immediate question there is, well, what's the scenario where we perform better? And I think I think we pretty can safely say that uh, if you're if you're using upsells of any kind, um, it's probably going to be worth your while to get set up with the Elevar server side solution. We've seen um, enough data now that shows that merchants using upsells, hooking up Google Ads server side do see a, a noticeable improvement. Um Let's say I'm just, let's say I'm an LLVR fanboy. What if I just love LLVR tracking? I know they're going to treat me well and I just want to set them up primary out of the gate. Could I do that if I wanted to? 
hundred percent. Yeah, you can definitely do that. I would encourage. So a lot of times people will be suspicious about their Google ads tracking. It's it. it I don't know why it's so common. Maybe it's just because Google ads is so common. It's it's probably as popular, if not more popular than Facebook. But very often we have clients come to us and say, "It, I just don't believe the ad numbers in Google ads. If if you're one of those people, then I would say for, for sure that it's a time to try our server-side connection because for most of those people, we do improve things. If your ads seem to be performing fine and you're not skeptical about the performance um, and you just really want to set it up, yeah, go for it. But A, B it. Make sure that our connection works better than the existing connection. If it's the same and you really want to use server side, go for it. Our connection will probably improve over time. And actually, I shouldn't say probably, it's going to. Yeah. Um, I do have one question for you. I, as something I've seen pretty commonly in our app. Um, so, you know, I set up the destination and I'm in Ilovar's app and I see that for whatever reason, um, you know, maybe an order uh, in Shopify was sent to Facebook and GA4 and maybe TikTok, but that same order was not sent to Google ads. Um, why is that? Why, why am I sending that order to three destinations, but not Google ads? Is there something wrong with the destination or my setup or, or what, what would be causing that? Yeah, good good question. Hopefully there's nothing wrong. What is probably happening is remember chan our channel accuracy and our server events log is only server side data. So what we're telling you is our server side connection couldn't send data to Google ads because there was no Google click ID. This makes sense because not every single purchase is caused by a Google ad. Only clicks that come through a Google ad will have a Google click ID and only of these events, these purchases that have the Google click ID will we send to Google ads. So if somebody comes in on a Facebook ad and makes a purchase, well, we don't, we, we don't have a Google click ID in that case. And we're not going to send that conversion to Google because it has nothing to do with Google. They need a Google click ID to receive the conversion. So I, right don't expect that every single purchase goes to Google ads unless every single purchase is related to a Google ads click, which is very unlikely. Yeah. I think it's a great call out because every destination is used a little bit differently where you might want just all of your data in GA4 as sort of like a data warehouse. Um, Google ads, like you said, maybe I'm on the Facebook app. Maybe I'm, I, I see an ad and I click through it and I you know make a purchase. Google really didn't have a whole lot to do with that. Really, they had nothing to do with that. So in all of our mind, we literally didn't capture a Google Click ID because one wasn't generated. Google is effectively saying, that was not us. We're not going to send it to Google Ads. Um, so if that's what you're seeing, the very first thing I would check, is there a Google Click ID on that order? If not, that's why it wasn't sent. That order very likely had nothing to do with Google. Mm -hmm. um, any other major limitations with this that you want to call out before we wrap up? Uh, I think we've covered most of the limitations now. Um, uh, no, I think we're good. I think we covered most of the the important points here. Yeah, unless you think I've missed anything or you have anything else you want to chat about, I think we're good. Hopefully, this is helpful. Yeah, yeah. No, I think yeah. we're good too. Like I said, just to put a bow on it, we have a setup guide. It is a little lengthy, but the instructions are pretty clear. I've I've done it myself now quite a few times. Um, we do recommend, as we said earlier, setting up the secondary conversions, letting them run for just a week or two. Um, if you like what you see, switch them to be primary. Um, when you do that, when you actually decide to fully invest in the server side tracking solution, you'll want to make sure that if there's any instances of, uh, you know, Google ads tracking on your website to deprecate that. Right. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. I would say, so it gets a little nuanced because you could potentially, and, and to be honest, this is probably what I would do. If I was testing the solution, I might just put my purchase conversions server side and I might leave my other conversions website. So if you're using GTM, maybe you just pause the purchase conversion in GTM and then set up the new conversion that we describe in our guide and see if we do better. And then if we do, maybe at that point, you can transition all your conversions over to Elevar. So just remember that you don't want to double count. That's the biggest thing to keep in mind. You don't want Elevar set up alongside existing tracking and 
not have at least one of those sets of data as secondary. Yeah, yeah. As always, if you have any questions, you can reach out to support. You can do that in your app. Just go to settings, create a ticket. There's a free form. Uh, you can drop in your question there. Our team will definitely get back to you within a day or two to uh, help you troubleshoot any issues that you might be having or take a look at um, anything that might be going on with your setup that uh, isn't what you expected. So um, I appreciate your time. I think I'm good if you are, and we can wrap yeah. it up here. Thanks, AJ.